In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the Renegade Photoshop action. So I'm going to work through three examples um, of this effect, so just so that you get really familiar with how it works. Uh, so firstly, you're going to open up this photo, and I'm going to recreate this. So you can see this action does a bunch of things and um, gives you a lot of ability to be, to be really creative um, with the result. Uh, there's a lot of control, a lot of layers to, to play around with. I'll get into all that. Uh, the second example, I open up this photo. I'm going to recreate this. Okay, and the third example, this guy, and I'll recreate this. All right, so I've got a few more examples. I'll just quickly uh, flick through here. Just bear with me, I've created a bit of room. Five, oops, sorry, from five to five A. Six. Seven. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, I'm going to close these all down. And let's get into it because I've got a lot to get through here. Okay, so uh, if you're familiar with my actions, you're familiar with the things you need to set up before you play the, uh, the action, but for those that, um, if this is the first action you're using, I'll just go through a few, few things that you need to check off just to make sure your Photoshop files are set up correctly and you don't get any errors. Uh, so firstly, look into your layer panel and uh, your photo layout should look identical to this. It should say background and have the lock symbol. 99% of the time when you open up a photo in Photoshop, it'll already be set as a background correctly. Uh, but it's generally not when you open up a photo with a transparent background. So let's just pretend that you've got a transparent background. And I've just opened up the photo. And it's called Layer 1. So to set this photo correctly as the background layer, go to Layer, New, Background from Layer. And that'll just set it correctly as a background. Okay, so again, if you open up your photo and it looks identical to this, uh, you don't need to do anything there. Okay, still in the layer panel, go to the top right hand corner icon. Now this is going to be chopped off on my screen, but if you click on that and you scroll down to panel options, uh, you'll get this uh, window here. And just down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copied layers and groups is ticked. It's very important. Uh, click OK. Next, go to image mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, and as always, make sure you're working with a high resolution photo. You can see mine here is 2500 by 3400, uh, resolution of 300. Okay, so avoid using small photos under a thousand pixels. Uh, with any photo effect action, the best results are always going to come with high res photos. Okay, cancel that. So, what I need to do now is uh, get light up the brushes that were included with the download. So, I'll just hit B. Anywhere over the canvas, right click, okay, and go to this uh, right hand corner icon, click on that, go to replace brushes, select that, and just select the renegade brushes.avr file, okay, it's included with the download, and they'll just pop up here, alright, so that's all ready to go. Uh, so, what I need to do now is I uh, basically create a selection around my subject, okay? So that's where all the effects are going to be concentrated around. Uh, so to do that, this one's going to be pretty simple because I've got my subject on a white background. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab my wand tool out, W, and uh, I'm just going to click anywhere over this white background, and that should do a pretty good job of selecting my subject. Now, if I, um, f if I just fill this selection in now, so to fill my selection with this foreground color, you hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete, you see that it's actually filled everywhere but my subject. So I need to invert that selection. So Control Shift I or Command Shift I. Now what I need to do is uh, create a new layer. So I'm going to go Layer, New Layer. And this must be called Brush, B-R-U-S-H, all in lowercase. The action won't work at all if it's not called Brush. Click OK. Now, if I hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete, I have filled my subject in black. Now, it's, I've missed the part here, so I'm just going to hide my brush layer. I'm going to select my background layer, W to get the one back out. I'm just going to click into here, 
and a little bit there. Okay, now I'm going to turn my brush layer on, select it, and it's going to delete from there. Okay, so there we go. I've created an outline around my subject. That's all set up correctly. So what I need to do now is load up the Actions panel. So go to Window, Actions. It'll pop up to the side. Uh, go to this top icon. Go to Load Actions. Select Renegade.atn. And this is the action here. Okay, now before you run the action, just hit B, okay, to activate the brush. Uh, just make sure your brush opacity is at 100%, okay. And it's always a good idea before running any action to go to Edit, Purge, All. That'll just wipe out any history that's banked up in Photoshop. It'll help the action run, uh, play back a lot more smoothly. Okay, uh, we are all ready to go. Now there's going to be a few pop-ups here. Uh, at the beginning of the action, which are really important, which I'll talk to you about. So I'm just going to just twirl open my Renegade action, just so I can see the steps. And I'm just going to click play down the bottom here, to begin the action. And straight away, you get a pop-up that says, uh, in the next step, select the background texture from the background textures folder included in the download. Once you've selected a texture, move scale it over your design. You can change the texture anytime after the action has finished playing. Hit enter on the keyboard to confirm the texture placement and resume the action playback. Click continue below to proceed. Uh, so this step's really simple. All you need to do is click continue. Okay. Now I'm just going to navigate to um, the background textures folder here. Okay. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, I've just added, I've just um, placed two textures in this folder, but um, there's a lot more textures included in the download. So what all I'm going to do is double click on the texture and it'll it'll appear here in our design. Now you'll notice that the action's not playing, it's not continuing to play and we have this uh, box around our texture. So if I just zoom out a bit here, control minus or command minus to zoom out, um, holding down shift I can just scale this texture over the, of, over the design just like that. Okay, now the placement of the texture and the texture that you pick, um, you know, when the action's finished, you can change it any time, so I'll get into that. So when you've finished placing the texture, just hit enter. The action will continue and we'll get to this next window. It just says, in the next step, select a paint texture from the paint textures folder. Uh, once you've selected a paint texture, position it behind your subject. Uh, again, you can change the paint texture any time after the action's finished, hit enter. Um, to confirm the placement and the actual keep playing, click continue below to proceed. So this is basically just the same thing, but this time you need to select uh, a paint texture. So I'll go into my paint textures folder, uh, and again, for this tutorial I've just added three textures, but there's a lot more in the download. Now for this example, I think I used number eight here. Yep, that's the one. So you can see there's the texture. Um, now if I hold down shift alt or shift option, I can um, scale that down like that and I can just rotate it okay so this the position here isn't final we can change it after the action is finished uh, okay so I'm happy with that so all I need to do now is hit enter oops hit enter and the action will again um, continue to play uh, now there's going to be one more pop-up window which is really important uh, but it's also uh, a stage where you can be really creative. So here it is here. It says, uh, in the next window, use the liquify tools to distort your subject. The distortion you create will be used to generate light streaks and other design elements after the action's finished playing. Please refer back to this video for tips on how to distort your subject and how to apply light streaks to the distorted areas. Click continue below to proceed. So I'll explain what's going on here. So click continue. And the liquify window will pop up. And you can see it's already been distorted, but um, if you want to, that's just a default distortion that I've added to the effect. Um, but if you want to start from scratch, which is, which is what I do 99% of the time, is click on Restore All to the side here. Okay, and that just um, reverts back to the original photo. I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. Okay, so the idea here is that if you just select this top left hand corner icon here, the forward warp tool, select that and all you want to do is go around the, the edges of your subject and distort it. You know, get really creative with um, 
uh, with the distortion. Now, if to change the size of your brush, use the left and right square brackets. Okay, so I can just I'll explain to you why this part um, is important after the action's finished. But just for the meantime, you know, go around the edges and you know, create some cool warps. Okay, something like that. Okay, it looks really messy now, but um, yeah, you'll you'll want to make it messy here because I'll show you uh, after the action's finished what you can do with this. So I click OK, and that's it. The action's now going to run through to the end. Um, so it's going to take about another another minute to play back. So I'll just uh, fast forward the video and get to the result. All right, so the action's finished playing back, and this is. Uh, the default result. Now I'm just going to collapse the actions panel and the very first thing you want to do uh, pretty much with any action uh, is to collapse all the folders that are open after the actions finished. So you can see everything's left open, um, it's really messy. So what you want to do, the Renegade folder will already be selected. Hold down uh, Control Alt or Command Option on Mac. Click on this folder arrow and that just collapses everything. So everything's uh, nice and neat. Now, you can see, um, zoom in there, so there's just the default result. Now, if I just open up what we're trying to get close to, this is what we're going to be um, pretty much recreating. So you can see there's a lot to do, but it's really simple uh, and there's a heap of flexibility uh, to do things. So let's get into it. Now, uh, I've left the brush layer on here at the top. Okay, so there it is. If you want to run the action again for any reason, shift select these two folders, delete, and the action is ready to go again. Okay, now the adjustments folder, I'll go inside here quickly. Here uh, we've got a whole heap of, oh, we've got 11 color options. Uh, we can play around the overall saturation. So just double click on this. Use the saturation handle here to, you know, crank up all the colors if you want to do that. Uh, overall contrast in brackets opacity. Uh, whenever I've got a layer in, uh, whenever I've got a layer that's got opacity in brackets, I'm basically telling you to experiment with that layer via the opacity. So currently it's at 10%. So if I just click and drag that opacity to the right, that's 100, that's 0. So just play around with the opacity there. And the way the color options work is that you basically just turn the folder on and off uh, for them, just like that. Just go down, flick a different one on, and apply a different color option. So I'll get into this much more as I work through the examples. So I just collapse that, and let's get into the Renegade folder. So the first thing you want to do, uh, you know, after the action's finished, is clean up the focal points of your design. So currently the face is a little bit messy. I want to be want that to be much more clearer, closer to the original photo. So this layer here, reveal original photo, brush mask. Use this layer to reveal. Uh, yeah, parts that you want to be much cleaner. So currently, if I turn this layer on and off, it does nothing. It's because it's hidden by this mask. So this mask here, it's all black. If I hit Control I or Command I to invert that to white, you'll see all it is is our uh, photo, our cutout, just just in its normal state. Uh, but it's hidden by this mask. So the idea here is if you hit B. Okay, right click, grab the soft brush that I've included uh, in the brushes, and just uh, brush white onto that mask, and you can see it's revealing the original photo. So if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see that's already made a massive improvement to the design because our face is nice and clear. And what I generally like to do here is not to use, um, you know, I'll blend a little bit between. Uh, the photo being, you know, perfectly visible versus uh, with all the effects. So currently, you know, I'll drag it to 0%. Maybe I want to use just 50% blend between the two. So I'll just drag the opacity up to, you know, 50%. So that way I keep some of the effects hanging around, um, and, but I also use some of the original um, look of the photo. Okay. So moving on down, so this folder here is the one you really want to jump into and play around with a lot. Uh, now before I do that, I might just change the background color and make it much darker because these effects are going to pop out a lot more. So I'm just going to, right down the bottom here, this layer here, use single color background, just turn that on. 
Okay, I'm just going to just pick a different colour here. Much darker. That way I can just see all the glows and stuff much easier. Now, uh, back into this folder here. It's called Liquify Glows and Light Streaks. So there's a heap um, to do in here. So I'll go from the top. So firstly, we've got this layer here. I've color coded the groups um, that you want to play around with. So this first one here, Edge Glow, and I've got in brackets Brush Mask. So if, and this layer here, Change Color, okay? So firstly, if I just double click on this Change Color and drag this Hue handle around, you can see that straight away recolors the glows around uh, your subject, which is really cool. Okay, so just by default, I've just applied a green color. Um, but yeah, it's quickly jump into there, change the color. So, uh, what color have we got here? So we're going for a purple. So let me just find that something like like that. Okay, so. Th the edge glow uh, lay here, uh, the way it works is if I just hold in shift and click on this mask, mask to hide it, you'll see all it is, it's a um, outline around your subject, it's glowing, uh, but what I've done is I've restricted it. If I hold in alt to option and click on that mask to go inside, you'll see that I've restricted that area, uh, sorry, I've restricted that layer to only appear in the white areas here, so it's gonna be really random. And every time you play the action, that's going to be randomized. So if I move that mask around, you can see um, that's just randomizing the position. But if I want to have complete control where these glows appear, I can fill this uh, mask in black. So um, Alt Delete or Option Delete to fill with the foreground color. So now I've hidden that layer. What I can do, I can grab my white brush, B, um, hit X to flip between the foreground and background colors. So now I've got white, so now when I brush, I can actually brush on the glows where I want them to appear. All right, so that's really, really handy. Now what I also like to do, if I want to really boost up um, the brightness of these glows, what I'll do, I'll just shift select these two layers, Control G or Command G to group them. Then I'll hit Control J or Command J to duplicate that folder. And you see it has just boosted the brightness of all those colors. And what I can also do here is, you know, I can get a bit creative. I can, uh, I can select this change color layer, adjustment layer, and I can play around with this, right? And pick a different glow, um, maybe like that. But what I'll do, I'll just hide this, um, I'll fill this mask in black to hide it. Now I'll grab my white brush. Now I can just brush on where I want that second glow to appear. So now I'm blending between two different colors and brushing on where I want it to appear. So that's that's a really cool thing to, to play around with. So I can just change that color again. So you can see that a bit more. So yeah, it's really fun to play around with. All right, let's go on down. So this one here in red, reveal light streaks in brush mark, and I've got in brackets brush mask. This is the fun one. Okay, so currently, again, if I turn the uh, layer on and off, it does nothing. It's because it's hidden by this mask. If I hold down Shift, click on the mask. Okay, you can see all the light streaks are revealed when I just temporarily hide the mask. And the way these light streaks are created is that, you know, remember uh, during the playback of the action when the liquefy window popped up and, you know, we create all those distortions. So you can see it creates a blend between tracing around... Uh, those abstract shapes you can see there, and also where we distorted the image. So you can see, you know, uh, a longer arm here, you can see these waving shapes along here, down through there. Uh, they're all created from where we distorted our subject in the liquify window. So that's why you want to get creative in creating some really cool distortions, because uh, you can see along her ski here down the bottom, you know, I added some distortions there. Okay, so, and how you want to use this layer is, again, just brush on where you want it to appear. So I'll hit B, grab my white brush, and all I'm going to do is just start brushing, you know, around some random areas like that, and it starts to bring on, you know, some of the, you know, and if you brush on a segment and you don't like it, just hit Control, Control Z to undo it.
Okay, so uh, you don't obviously don't want to use all the glows, so or you can if you want, but the idea is is that you brush on where you want it to appear. All right, and again, we've got this layer here above it called Change Color. So I double click on that, and play around with the uh, the color there. Um, and same story if you want to boost the brightness shift select those three layers control G um, and then uh, control or command G to oh, sorry J to duplicate it okay so you can see up there and what I what I like to do here uh, is a there's my um, copy group if I hold down alt or option and click on this layer mask down the bottom It'll apply a layer mask to that folder, uh, but it's um, by default it's added in black, so it's hidden it straight away. So if now I can just brush on where I want those brighter areas to appear, just like that, which is a nice little touch. All right, so it's going down. So we've got this layer here called Reveal Light Bursts. Okay, again hidden by that mask. Hold down shift, I can see, now I can see those light bursts revealed, but I just want to brush on where I want them to appear. So I grab my white brush, brush it up there. Generally I like to brush them on where, you know, I've added the light streaks. Kind of looks like the light's bursting out from that area. Uh, and again, I can use the change color adjustment layer. Do something like that. Okay, this layer here, reveal light sweeps, in brackets, brush mask. Hold down shift to hide that mask, about to reveal it. So you can see the light sweeps basically create this circular motion around your subject um, with all these different colors. So what I like to do here is to, I firstly like to preview the light sweeps by holding down shift and click on the mask. So now I can see them and you know I'm just looking around the design and thinking where could I brush this on that looks really cool. So I'll grab the, my um, white brush and I'll just start brushing over some some random spots like that. So you can see I've just revealed a little bit of the white sweeps, adds a bit of motion, looks really cool. And what I like to also do is change the color obviously. So I'll double click on this layer and then play around with this handle here and you'll see the colors begin to change. And all I want to do is you know, get a color that suits all the other um, all the other design element, elements, so maybe something like that. Uh, what I also like to do is click on this colorize option, crank the saturation. Okay, so now I'm just using a single color. I can use that hue, hue handle again and cycle through. So I might actually use a single color and go for that blue because that looks really nice. Okay. Uh, and you know, I'll hide this mask again. If you wanted to scale up the light sweeps, just zoom out, control or command minus, control T to scale it, and I can scale up those light sweeps. Okay, if I wanted more, I can just shift select these two layers, hold down Alt or Option, drag up. That's just created a copy. So now I've got this second, this second one here, I can, you know, rotate, scale. Um, yeah, and change the colors, use the mask to, you know, blend between the two. Heaps you can do there. Uh, I'm just going to delete those. Turn my mask back on. Okay, it's looking cool. Alright, so let's go down. We've got this layer here called Photo Highlights. I'm just going to jump into the Change Color option straight away to uh, flick through the colors. So this will... So as I move those handles, can you see how the highlights of our subject are changing color. Okay, so um, where's the original? So it looks like I've gone for a purple. Um, purple. Something like that. Okay, and if you're getting, you know, lots of color over your subject's face, just use the mask of this photo highlights folder, okay, and just brush black onto the mask to hide it. So now you can see when I brush over the face, the colors disappear, but for this particular design, I think it looks better with some purple there. Okay, and this one down the bottom is where you want to be really creative and have a bit of fun. So 
uh, I've got this play here called Reveal Liquify in brackets brush mask. So if I just hide this mask, shift select, shift click again, you can see that now that reveals all the distortions we created in that liquify window. Okay? So obviously, well you can use it if you want, um, you can just hide that mask and use all the distortions. But again, I like to control where they appear. So I'll just grab my uh, white brush, select the mask, you know, and I'll just experiment with, you know, just brushing around my subject and revealing little swirls. Okay. You know, it just adds an extra element to like the photo manipulation. And what you can see here is when I zoom in, if I just hide this mask, you'll see that those glows actually trace around, like I was trying to explain before, they trace around where we applied the liquify effect. Okay? So if I um, if I now brush white into this mask up here, you see that liquify goes out to the edges where that glow is. Okay, so that's that's really cool. So you can see where I've applied all the subtle little swirls. Um, yeah, looking really cool. So play around with that. All right, let's keep going. This uh, this folder here, text shapes, pretty simple. Turn it on and off. They add all those uh, shapes around random points of the subject. Every time you play the action, those positions are going to be uh, randomized. So if you go inside here, it's got three layers. Text shapes one, two, and three, and we've got these layers above to simply color them. So you just double click on these boxes and select a new color, okay, and they will change. And sometimes what I like to do, if uh, if I've got a white background, okay, and you see my text shapes are hidden. Uh, firstly, you can just double click on these boxes and you know turn to black. Or I, what I generally like to do, it's a bit quicker. I hit Control J, duplicate the folder, Command Control E to flatten it. Okay, so now I've got it on all my text shapes on one layer, and I'll just hit Control or Command I to invert it. So now they're all black. So you can see in a white background now they. Um, all pop up. Okay, uh, I'll turn this back to a dark color. So this uh, this folder here, Photo Edge Trace. I'll turn it on and off. So basically, I'll oh, go inside here. There's two layers, Photo Edge Trace one and two. And the way these work, it basically uh, looks for the edges in your photo and applies um, an outline to it, so you can see it there. So this adds a cool little bit of detail. Uh, and if looking at this example here, I've applied some colors to them. You see the green and the purple. So I just double click on this, apply a color. So you can see the green applied there. And this one, apply a purple. So they're, they're cool ones to play around with. Um, and again, if you want a lot more of these lines, just duplicate the entire folder and then start moving them around. Okay, so this folder here, paint texture over subject. Um, we go inside here. Now, this layer here, paint texture. So this is the paint texture. It's kind of hard to see in this example. This is the paint texture that you imported uh, when the action started. So um, just by default, I've applied a gray tone to it. But if I just paint this like a red, you can see the texture there now up here. So it really depends on how bright, you know, the colors of your photo. If your subject's much brighter, whiter, um, you know, the gray is going to appear a lot more. But my subject's quite dark, so you can change, you can move the texture around, you can change the color, um, but definitely play around with the colors because it'll affect, you know, the brightness um, of your subject. I might actually add a bit of purple to that. It looks good. Okay. Main photo, if I turn this folder on and off, you see that basically um, reveals our photo. So if you go inside here, we have a folder here, uh, sorry, layer here called Show Photo Color and Break its Opacity. So this is basically, um, you turn this one on and off to, if you want color in your photo, leave it on. If you want to take the color out, turn it off. But because there wasn't much color in my photo to start off with, it's not really um, showing through in this example. 
Now this layer here main photo. Okay, so I like to play, what I like to do here is you know I notice you know when I turn it off I get some some cool sort of blurring effects. So maybe I want you know a bit of that on his shoulder. So I'll select the mask, grab a black brush, and I'll just brush away in that area. Okay. So yeah, just getting the habit of like turning layers on and off and seeing how your design looks with it off, and then using the mask to control, you know, where you want particular effects to appear. Okay, so these two layers here, motion blur one and two, I'll turn those both off. So you can see that, just adds a little bit of motion blur around edges. Uh, and photo shadow, this one here, um, it's hard to see in the example, but it adds like a soft um, black shadow around your subject. Okay, this folder here, particles. Uh, if I turn that on and off, okay, you can see what that does. And again, if I have a uh, white background, you'll see that a lot of the particles, um, you know, are hidden. So what I like to do is go inside this folder and use this layer here, change color, double click, and change the brightness. Of that layer there, uh, so the lightness, you know, turn it to black. So now all the all the particles are much more visible. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, particles. Okay, so paint texture behind subjects. So if I turn that one on and off, what I want to do is I'll go inside here and there's a few layers. So we've got our paint texture. Now uh, by default, when the action's finished, what I've done is I've filled the paint texture color, um, I've filled the paint texture with the colors of your original photo. So you can see that, um, you know, my original photo didn't have much color, and you can see it there in that layer there. So basically, I'm filling my paint texture color, my paint texture here, uh, with this color above. Now, if I wanted to fill it with a solid color, just turn this box on, okay? So now when I change the color here, I'll change it to white, you can see I can change that to any color I want. So I might go with a something like that. That looks pretty cool. Now if I just select the texture, I can you know, zoom out, control command T, and I can rotate it, scale it, do whatever I want. Now if I want to replace the texture, it's really simple, just right click and go to replace contents, navigate to the paint textures folder, and then simply just uh, pick a new texture, just double click on it, and it will just update in the, in the design right there. So don't feel that the first texture that you choose when the action's playing um, is what you're stuck with, just you know, cycle through different textures and have a think what looks better. All right. Uh, so that's that. Now, what I sometimes like to do here is, you know, apply different colors. Uh, currently, it's just a single color there. But what if I wanted this top part of the texture to be purple and this part to remain green? So I'll create a new layer above here. Control Shift N or Command Shift N. Hold down Alt or Option between the new layer and the layer below. You'll see that square and the arrow up here. So now it's going to clip it. Let's create a clipping mask. So now, uh, if I just hit B, uh, I'll grab a, I'll grab a purple. If I start brushing here, you can see it. I've, you know, I'm now filling in that texture with a new color. Okay. If I release it from the clipping mask, you'll see that it just applies it everywhere. But because I'm applying a clipping mask, it's going to be um, constricted to the pixels down here of the paint texture. Okay. So that's, you, you need to add that step. It must be a clipping mask. All right. Okay, so this folder here, background texture, just by default, I've got it turned off. But if you turn it on, okay, so that's the texture that I imported at the start of the action. So I'll go inside here. There's the background texture. And just by default, I've um, applied a blue tone to it. Okay, same story. If you want to change the texture, right click, Replace contents, navigate to the background textures folder, okay, and select a new texture. Now, if when the texture imports, if it's too small, you can see it's it's tiny. I can just see here. 
just hit Control or Command T, scale it up. Okay, hit Enter to confirm, and there we go, got a new texture. Now, um, a few things to play around here, or what I like to do. Firstly, you can change the color of the texture, easy enough. Okay, uh, but what I like to do here is uh, I'll set the background texture folder blend mode to like soft light. So now what that's doing, it's basically blending down onto this layer here. So if I just change the brightness, you'll see how the texture starts to come through. So it's just I just prefer doing it that way um, because that way I can quickly control the background color um, and it blends well with the texture. Uh, another thing you can do, you know, I'll just turn this back to pass through. Um, I can just lower the opacity of a folder altogether. So I'll bring it to zero. Maybe I just want a tiny little bit of texture, just like that. Okay. All right, and then that is it. If I hold, if I hide the these two, uh, you, then you your designs on transparent background, so you can um, import that. Sorry, save that out as a PNG, and drop, drop that onto your other designs. Okay, I'll jump back into the adjustments folder because uh, I just want to play around with the color options here. So basically, all I'm doing is just scrolling through and just getting an idea of which one suits the design the best. Um, and I'll show what else I like to do here. So maybe, I, you know, I don't mind this one, um, but it might be a bit too strong. So I'll select it and I'll just lower the opacity, bring it to zero, maybe I just want about 40% of that layer. Then I'll go back up the top here and then cycle through, cycle through them again. Actually, I didn't mind the first one. So I'll use a little bit of that layer. Okay, I like it with that on, it's just boosting the colors a bit more. Um, it's about 50% of that. Uh, overall saturation, I'll just turn it up a little bit so the colors really pop. And the contrast, I'll, I'll leave it as is. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip between that and the original. So there's our original photo and that's what I got. So, um, really fun action to use. Heaps of um, flexibility with what you can do. Be really creative with, um, you know, especially with your liquefier, um, you know, distorting your edges. There's a, one thing I forgot to cover in here. Down the bottom here, um, I've got this folder called Add Lightly. If I turn this folder on, basically what that does, it fills um, our subject with a gradient. Now, if I just double click on this, I can change the color Okay, so you can see that there. There's a few cool things we can do here. So, if I just double click on this gradient box, I can change the angle, okay. Oops. Change the angle, looks like that. Um, but what I can also do is control, you know, currently I don't want to fill everywhere. Um, now, I'm gonna fill this mask in black. If I just go inside that mask and see, currently that texture's appearing in the gray areas. You know, I wanna control where this appears. So I'm just gonna fill that black. But now, when I grab my white brush, I can brush on where I want that those light leaks to appear. Okay, if I just hold the if I hide this mask all together, whoops, there it is. Um, you can see that there's a gradient there. Okay, but also you don't want it to look like that. You want to control where it appears. Um, so that looks really cool. I can you know. I have to find the areas where I want it to appear. Now I can sort of cycle through this angle, get an idea of what looks the best. Okay, and again, you know, jump back into here, play around with the colors. Use a single color. You know, maybe if I wanted a yellow when it's too strong, I can just lower the opacity of the entire folder. It's like that, so it's got some soft, some soft yellow glows. Okay. So don't forget about that one, because that is a cool folder as well. Now, there's uh, something else I want to cover, uh, which is a bit of fun. So if you just um, go to the very top here, 
hit Control Shift N or Command Shift N, create a new layer. Okay, just needs to be a blank layer. If you go over to your tools here and then click on this one here, go down to the Smudge tool, okay, uh, and make sure if you look at the top here, Sample All Layers is checked. Okay, that's very important. So now when I zoom in here, if I um, we'll activate this again, the Smudge tool. So I'll just um, turn up the size of my brush using the left and right square brackets. So if I just click and drag, what that's going to do, it's going to smudge any area of our design. But you'll see that there's absolutely nothing on this layer, um, which is why that option there is really important, sample all layers. It's basically like having our entire design on one layer, but it's not visible. So, you know, I can, what I like to do is, you know, create little details. So I'll hold down shift, click, and drag up. So I can create like these little, you know, I'm adjusting my brush size, getting in there, creating like little, little swirls. You know, maybe um, from here, I want like, you know, some, just like dripping effect. Okay. And you only really, you only really want to do this step when you're completely happy with the design. Because you know, if I change the background color, you'll see. If I scroll down the bottom here, you'll see those smudges that are created now um, don't look right because it was sampling the entire design um, with the black background. But now I've turned it to white. You know, it doesn't update. It just remembers you know what it was smudging um, beforehand. So if you know, if it turns back to a black. Get something close to what we have. You can see it's starting to to look how it uh, originally did. Okay. And um, finally, uh, with this example, what I like to do is add a bit of sharpening. So um, I'll do a merge visible uh, of everything. So if I just hold down Control Shift uh, Alt E, Command Shift Option E. You'll see that what it's done, it's put out the entire design on one layer. So I'll move that around. Okay, there it is. And if I go to Filter, Other, High Pass, I usually like to set this at a radius of 2. Okay, so you can just see a little bit of an outline of our design. Set this to Hard Light. Okay, and you know I'll turn this on and off. So you can see how much that's sharpened the design. And if it's too strong, I just lower the opacity. I generally start at zero, start dragging to the right. You know, use about 40%. Okay, I'm just gonna shift all these together, group them, control G, and there we go. Pretty cool. All right, okay. So I'm just gonna close this down now and open up the second example. Okay, so I've got the next example open now, and uh, all I've done so far is just traced around uh, my subject, got my brush layer. So I'll jump into the action, and uh, I'll twirl this open so I can just see the steps. And I'm just going to click play. I know what to do here, so I'm going to grab my uh, background texture. Okay, enter. Uh, next, I'm going to grab my paint texture. Uh, we'll go for, I think it was this one, okay, hit enter, and I'll wait for the liquify window to, to pop up, okay, continue, okay, I'm just going to restore this, and I'm just going to go around the edges and create some swirls. You know, if you mess up an area or it's an area you just don't really like what you've done, um, just grab the reconstruct tool, this one here, and when you start brushing, it'll start, it'll revert back to the original state of your photo. You see that there? Okay. Uh, the feet. Oh. Okay. 
see something wacky. That'll do, click OK. Alright, I'll fast forward the video, get to the result. Okay, it's all done, so I'm just going to zoom in a bit and collapse the actions panel. I'm going to collapse all these folders, uh, Control Alt or Command Option, click on this folder arrow. That's that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up um, my reference here, what we're going to try and get close to creating. Uh, there. So you can see quite a bit to do. So let's get into it straight away. I'm just going to go down the bottom here and it's a bit like a, a bit of a lighter grey. And I can see what I've also done here is I've revealed some of the original background on the bottom here and that's blended up into a solid colour. So what I've done here, I've just selected the mask of this layer. Okay, hit B, I'll grab my soft brush and I'm just going to brush a little bit of black. And all that's going to do is start to reveal um, the underlying layer, which is our background. Uh, so now, now if I change the color, you can see uh, it's missing those areas where we brushed. Okay, uh, what to do next? So I'm looking at is the glows around the edges, and uh, they all seem to be orange or you know reddish color. So I'm going to go into my Actually, what I'll do first, I'm just going to zoom in and take a look at the face. Is I might just clean up some of this. Um, I'll go inside the liquify, liquify folder, and it's the photo highlights layer. Um, I'll just hide a little bit of that. Just going to brush black onto the mask, and the photo edge trace is just adding a couple of extra lines on his face, which you don't want. So I'm just going to use the mask on the photo edge trace folder. I'm going to brush there. Uh, the same with the the text shapes, I can just see a little bit of a triangle here, it's a bit distracting, I'm just going to brush that away. Okay, uh, you can see like the action creates like the base look of the photo, adds like a, you know, a bit of a painted look. You know, if I hide this, um, so there's the original photo, and that's what the action does. Okay, so that's a cool little detail. Um, zoom out. So I go into the, this folder here. And I'm going to just change the edge glow color. We're going for something like that. Uh, the light streaks. I'm just going to hold down shift to see what we've got to work with. So you can see, you know, the outline of all the distortions. It's also traced over some of our shapes. So first, I'm just going to um, just going to change the color. I think that was kind of similar. And I'm just going to brush on, you know, where I want it to appear. Maybe not that part. That looks pretty cool. That'll do. Uh, I might just shift select. I'll group those layers. I'm going to duplicate the folder. Control the command J. It's going to boost the brightness up of those glows. Now I can see the uh, these lines running through, you know, those trace lines are black, so in here they're white. So I'm just going to go into my um, photo edge trace, I'm going to flip these to black. Okay, and I can, <coughs> excuse me, I can also see um, it's traced around the highlights in uh, like a cyan color, and here it's more of like a sky blue, so I'm just going to go up into my blue folder here, and right down the bottom, got my photo highlights. I'm just going to double click on that and change the colour. Something like that. That'll do for the moment. Um, now, I can also see that the text shapes are black. So I'm going to go into my text shapes folder, and I'm just going to make this all black. Okay, let's have a look. What I might do, I'm just going to duplicate the folder. 
make them a bit more prominent. And I'm just going to lower the opacity down, but somewhere around there. Okay, looking pretty cool. Um, I can see that I've also brushed on some of the liquify layer to create those distortions. So I'm going to go into my blue folder right down the bottom. I've got the reveal liquify layer. I'm just going to check out, I'm just going to hold down shift to disable that mask. Check out the distortions I created. So it looks really cool around the feet. So I'm just going to go ahead and start brushing on some random areas, see what it looks like. Um, that. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm just brushing on random areas and hitting Control Z if I don't like it. And you know, you just want to quickly scan around your design, brush on little areas, Control Command Z to undo it. And yeah, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, what else have I done here? I think the, I've changed the particles to more of a black. I can see them in black. So I'll go into my, um, my particles folder. I'm just going to change the brightness Crank this down, black. Uh, what else have we got happening here? I can see the texture, uh, the paint texture within our subject is darker. And here it's not too visible, so I'm going to go into my, um, where is it? My paint texture over subject folder. I'm going to turn this down a bit. I might actually try and change the blend mode. See if that makes a difference. Turn it to hard light. Okay, so now the texture is a bit more visible. So you can always play around with the blend modes of layers as well. Okay, so the default of this one was uh, was overlay, I think. Overlay. So if you want it to appear much more prominent, switch over to hard light. Okay, now I'm just going to change the color. That I'm going to move it around. Okay, so now uh, you can see that appearing there. All right, so one th another thing I haven't done yet is jumped into the color options up the top here. So let's go ahead and check these out. Don't mind that one. That's really cool. It's a bit different to that, but I kind of prefer that. I'm just going to rename this one so I know which one I like. That looks cool. And that looks cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to move these two up. I'm just going to flick between these three. One, two, three. Just kind of get an idea of which one I like. I really like this one, uh, but I might try and create a blend between them all. So I'll just use like about 60% of that one. Um, just use a tiny bit of that one, and I might just use a tiny tiny bit of that one. Sweet, it's, you know, it's not completely accurate to this, but it, I think it looks still pretty cool. Now what I've also done is I've used that technique of changing those colors in the texture. So you can see there's a greens and like a pink. So I'm gonna go into my, uh, my paint texture behind subject, okay? And I'm gonna create a new layer here, Control Shift N or Command Shift N. Okay, you can see, if you create a layer between um, two that already have a clipping mask, so you can see those arrows there. So if I create a new layer between them, it's automatically going to be clipped. So I'm just going to hit B, I'm just going to grab, I might just color pick, you know, this green. I'm just going to start brushing on some green. Hit I to get the eyedropper tool, I'm going to color pick, uh, this orange, hit B. You know, something like. Something like that. Okay, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking really cool. Okay, so what I want to do now, um, I've included, you know, textures in the download, but they're all quite grungy, the textures. 
and there's no reason why you can't use you know you know like city images or landscape images behind your subject you're not restricted to just um, you know a grungy texture so uh, what I can do I'll go into my background textures folder okay I'm just gonna go inside here I'm gonna right click replace contents to change this background texture and I've just whack this city image in here okay so now the city image I'm just going to zoom out hit control command T to scale that okay you can see that the image the city image has now appeared but it doesn't look quite right it doesn't really blend with our design at all so let's go ahead and change a few things I'm just going to remove the the blue from that okay and what I want to do I want to move this city image up I want to you know have it up have it up around here okay and looking at this, with, you know, it's cut off here, it looks terrible. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to select the mask of this of this uh, city image. I'm going to hit G, get my gradient tool out, okay. Hit X to um, to make our foreground color black, background color white. Now, with, so with the gradient tool selected, um, I just click from the bottom here and drag up by holding Shift. And what that's going to do, you can see if I go inside that mask, it's just created a gradient from black to white, so now I can sort of blend. No, I'll do that again. I'm gonna blend that up a bit higher, so now um, our city image fades on. You know, and I can select this uh, background texture folder again and change the blend mode to like, you know, soft light or overlay. If you hold down um, Shift and use the plus and minus. Um, and hit plus and minus on the keyboard, it will actually cycle through the blend modes. So you can just sit there, go through them all. You know, that looks pretty cool. Is it inverted? It looks like it's inverted. Um, so that's pin light. Oh no, that one's more inverted difference. You know, so um, play around with that. I'm just going to set it to overlay. Um, it's going to lower the passive down just a little bit. The cool thing about that is if I change the background color now, it's actually going to affect the city image as well. You know, so I go to that green color. Okay. So there we go. Um, I'm going to turn these two, I'm just going to group these two and turn them on and off. So there's our before and after. All right, I'll move on to the last example. Okay, I've got the last example open now, and uh, what we're going to be doing with this one is uh, you can see I've just created my um, my brush layer like that. So we're going to be going from that to that. Okay, I'll keep that open and let's go. I'll just play the action. Choose my background texture. Scale that up. <coughs> Uh, grab my paint texture. Just like that. And then I'll wait for the liquify window. Restore. And I'm just going to go around and um, I might undo that. And try again. Uh, that'll do, click OK, and I'll uh, fast forward the video. Okay, the action's done, and uh, there's a bit we want to do here, so let's get into it. Collapse the actions panel, uh, Control Alt or Command Option, click on the folder mask, collapse all the layers and folders. Okay, uh, what I want to do first is clear up his face. So I'm just going to hit B on the mask here. I'm just going to grab my white brush, oh, sorry, my black brush, brush that away. Uh, okay, um, so again we're going for orange and red tones, so I'm just going to jump into my blue folder and I'm going to change up the edge glow colour. 
red, I'm going to shift select these, group them, I'm going to duplicate them, and I'm going to change the second color to be a bit more of a yellow. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add uh, a mask to this this folder, I'm just going to brush on where I want that second glow to appear. And I'm just going to change the color again. Like that. Okay, uh, so we've got, you see I've got uh, my highlights color all in blue, so I'm going to go down to the bottom here. Actually looking at this one, they might be red or they might be just black and white. I'll just change this to a red. I'll give it a red, but I'll just brush away um, from his face there. It's a bit too much. Okay. Uh, so we'll get into the, the light streaks. So I'm just going to hold down shift. I'm going to see what we've got to work with. Okay, I'm going to just firstly uh, change this color. We're going for like a red. Okay, I'll we'll start brushing, brushing some on. Looking good. Okay, uh, I might. I'm just going to shift select these. Group them, and I'm going to duplicate them again, make it a bit more prominent. That's looking cool. So, uh, what do I need to do now? Need to change these text shapes to black. Okay, I'm just going to quit this. Here, so I'm going to go Control J or Command J, Control E. I'm going to hit Control I to invert it. Then Control J to duplicate it, make it more um, visible. So there they are there. Uh, I'm going to look at the photo edge trace colors. Um, black. No, I think I kept them white. I think it looks pretty cool and white. Now I can see that texture is actually being flipped the other way. So I'm just going to go into my texture folder. Uh, I'm going to select my paint texture. I'm going to go. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. We hit Control T, scale this down, rotate it. Okay, I'm just going to turn this solid color on and color pick somewhere like that. Okay, I can. I noticed my um. My particles aren't too visible, so I'm going to my particles folder and I'm just going to change that to a black. I might duplicate this entire folder. Just like that, so they're much more visible again. Just lower the opacity down a bit. Alright, so let's get into these. Uh, so actually, what I might check is the uh, the light sweeps hold down shift so I'm just going to color this I don't mind in the red I'm just going to zoom out a bit control T I'm just going to scale that light sweep layer up a bit okay zoom in and now I'm just going to Brush on that mask. Pretty awesome. I'm just going to turn off this color option for the moment, just so I can see a bit better. Just the normal colors. Uh, now I'm going to go into my reveal liquify. Okay. B. Grab a white brush. Pretty awesome. 
Okay, let's go up to the top. I'm just going to play around with these colour options. Don't mind that one, I'm just going to mark it. I like that, that's cool. Keep it going down. Don't mind that. I'm just going to drag this up to the top. And click between these three. I'm just going to use a little bit of this one. A little bit of this one, not too much. And a little bit of that one. Okay, the contrast. I'll leave it without any contrast and turn up the saturation. Bring out those reds a lot more. Um, I'm going to check out the light leak. Try a single colour. No, I might leave it with it off, I think. I don't think it needs it. Okay, there's just some, you know, some subtle, subtle colour differences, but um, it's looking pretty cool. And I always like to go, and when I think I'm happy with it, I always like to jump back into these folders and, you know, play around with the colour again, just to make sure nothing, you know, looks better. But, uh, the light streak. Light streaks, so I'll play around with this one. So I reckon that looks better, a bit more orange. So I thought it was red, so it's turn it more of an orange. I'll keep going through the colours actually. Something like that. Um, I'll check out the light bursts. I'll hold down shift to preview it. It's not adding too much here, so uh, I think I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly check this background texture again. I'll try more of a red, orange. I don't mind black. Um, I'm just gonna hit Control C and copy that, and then click Cancel. Um, so that's what I had before, and I'm just double clicking this, paste it again, so I can preview it again. And then I hit undo and redo, so I can preview between the two. And I'll just leave it how it is. Alright, uh, we're all done here. So I'm just going to play around one more time with this. That'll do. Okay, so I hope you, um, you know, get the general drift of how to use it, uh, use the action. It's really simple. Uh, gives you a lot of creativity to you know, you know, playing around with the layers, you know, brushing the mask and getting to, um, you know, brush on the areas where you want particular effects to appear. Get a lot of control that way. Um, I'm just going to shift select like these. This before and after. You know, so to, to read to read to design these images um, from scratch without the action will take you. So depending on how much Photoshop experience you got, it can take you hours and hours. So these are actions that are designed to save you a heap of time um, and hopefully you learn a bit along the way, playing around with the layers and you know just have some fun. So uh, yeah, if you're stuck and need any help, just uh, send me a message and I'll assist. But yeah, if not, have fun using it. Thanks.